Discover the heartbreaking reality of what happens to military dogs after their service ends as Bob Bryant from Mission Canine Rescue lifts the lid on what the military would rather you didn't know. They've then carried out their service, they've done well, presumably most of them go on to do well because otherwise they wouldn't make the cut. I imagine most people would then think that there is some program that they then go into to have a happy retirement where they live the life of Riley. That's not the case. No, un unfortunately not. In fact, it's kind of a, I don't know, I kind of get angry when I think about it. These dogs, especially military dogs, they didn't ask to serve. They were basically drafted. They have no choice. They live in kennels. You know, they're fed whatever the military wants to feed them, which is pretty good. They do get vet care. But the military's idea of retirement now is, hey, let's give the dog a medal for their service. No, let's give the dog lifetime vet care and nutrition. Good grief. He served our country for eight to 10 years, and you want to give him a medal and pawn him off on an adopter to go broke paying for medical uh, expenses, food, what have you. These dogs can have a number. Uh, you're veterinarians, is that correct, sir? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. We see a lot of cancer in retired working dogs, especially uh, the worst one, in my opinion, hemangiosarcoma. Yeah. Absolutely nasty blood cancer. It can get uh, for your audience that doesn't know. We had a, a female German Shepherd named Nora that had it and uh, they took her spleen out, they discovered it, she was fine and then there was also a growth of it on her intestines. Burst one day and bled out, nothing we could do about it. She died on the way to the vet. But it's horrible disease and it's because of the compounds that they've been exposed to. Also even some of the bleaches that are used to clean their kennel environments. I wish that the military would be a little bit more serious about protection and contract dogs. Be a little bit more serious about their environment, their training and what they're inhaling because these substances mess them up. You've probably seen similar. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I think we've all heard about it from the Gulf War and all of these yes, things, sir. the human soldiers who are exposed to that having equal troubles, as well as that medical Correct. problem. I assume that there's quite a lot of injuries and hang ups from that thinking cruciates and arthritis and and all yes. of those. Long yeah, uh, cruciate surgeries, uh, hip dysplasia, panis. You yep. know, eye problems yep. of panis, yep. especially related from sun exposure, yep. also from the bleach that they're using to clean some of Some of the dogs just have a red sclera in their eye and there's, you can treat it, but you can't cure it. Yeah, yeah. So these dogs, so they've served their country, they've done a wonderful, valuable job and they're kind of kicked to the curb effectively. I mean, that's what I'm hearing. Well, when they're done with them, they're done with them. You yeah. know, they uh, the military dogs either go to their former handlers or if they don't have a handler, they're then adopted to the public. But the military has gotten to the point they know us well enough then when they have a dog that doesn't have a handler, we had one yesterday down in Florida. Uh, the dog had a couple of uh, apprehension bites but and one mistake bite on the handler, but there was no handler that could take it because they all had little kids. Yeah. So we take the situation and we determine whether we can accept the dog. If it's a dog that can be adopted, we'll accept it. But if that shocked you, you really need to check out our full conversation because it does get worse. And you can find that by tapping on this video linked on screen. So tap on that video, I'll see you there. But until the next time, I'm Dr. Alex. This is Our Pets Health, because they're family.